Hello everyone, welcome back. It's really good to see you again. So I am back. This is the second week in my new home and I'm really happy to say that I'm feeling a lot better this week. My illness has subsided. I'm feeling back to my normal self, which is amazing because it was lingering on and on and I thought, is it ever going to go away? But finally, it is gone. I'm feeling a lot happier, a lot better. And I've really been able to kind of work through all of the boxes that were in the room last time um, and get things done. As you can see, it's already starting to look like a home now, which is very, very nice. So in this video, I just wanted to share some of the ways that I start to make my house into a home and what I do to make it into what I'm looking for in terms of decoration and making it exactly what I want. So now that I've worked through most of the boxes and the layout is pretty much complete in here, I'll start to think about where I want to put pictures on the walls. <clears throat> I also mentioned in my last video that I was thinking about painting this room. So this week, now that I've had chance to kind of see the way the light comes in here and what it's like at different times of day, what it looks like in the evening with just lamplight, um, I've been able to really think about what kind of colour I want for the wall. As I mentioned last time, this white looks very clean and bright, but it's in the blue scale, so it's a bit cold. And I think, especially with autumn, winter coming up, um, it could be very, very cold in here if I don't change this colour. So I've been thinking about the colour in here a lot. And one of the things that I really like lately is quite dark walls. And I'll show you one of the colours that I have decided to maybe try. It is called Mouse's Back by Farron Ball. And first off, don't you just think that is such a cute name for paint, Mouse's Back. And you can just see what kind of colour that will be, even if I didn't show you the pot. You, could, that, you can just instantly imagine how that could look. And I've seen this quite a lot in different interiors. And I think it's a very chic, neutral. Um, it's quite a lot darker than what I would usually go for, but I'm thinking about being a, bit, a little bit brave, trying something new. So I've got a little pot of this. I have been looking online at every picture that has Mouse's back on the walls, on Pinterest, on Instagram, looking at real homes with this colour, and I think it looks very, very chic. And I think especially in this room, with all of these very pretty things, like as you can see, I like a lot of florals and pretty things, I think a nice muted colour like this, which will really uh, kind of dull the room but in a good way will will provide a nice contrast and backdrop to this room and make it a bit more elegant. So that is one of the colours that I'm thinking of going for. The next one is a little bit more of a safer choice. It is called Old White by Farron Ball. And this is one that I've liked for many years. It is a white but it's kind of a darker white and it's in the green scale so it's got a hint of green and obviously with a lot of the furnishings in here there's a lot of green. I often talk about how green is one of my favourite colours so that would be a nice alternative too. So it just really depends on how brave I'm going to be. I'm going to paint the, some, a little bit of the both of these on the wall so that you can see it on the wall <clears throat> and then I am just going to take my time with the decision about this. I'm in no rush to get it all painted. So I'm just going to um, think about it and really see which one I'm going to go with. But I would like to be brave and maybe go for the darker colour because I think it could be very, very elegant. Also, in my last video, I talked about wallpaper in the dining room with the Colfax and Fowler Snow Tree wallpaper. <clears throat> now, that does have in the stem of the design, this kind of browny neutral colour in there. So I think it could also look very nice with the two rooms as there you can literally see through here now, through to there, so it would work very well with that. But with the wallpaper, I only have two rolls of that. I bought them two years ago in a sale. They were very, very inexpensive, about £10 each in a bargain bin. So. Um, I do know that to, I've got two rolls, I need about eight rolls 
it's going to be very, very expensive. So I'm going to have to save up for that. Maybe it will be the beginning of 2022 when I'll be able to get the wallpaper done. So I'm in no rush to do that. So I am just going to go ahead and start putting pictures up and making it into a room. And then when I'm ready to wallpaper, I can easily just take them down and put them up. So yeah, that is the plan for the dining room. Other than that, I am going to start in this room putting up pictures now, now that I've got the furniture pretty much laid out. I think this is the layout that I'm going to stick with and go with. So I'm going to start putting up pictures. I've started to get them out. They're over here. Uh, I've started putting them in groups and groupings of how I think they're going to be. I've got the painting, large painting there, ready to go up here. That will take up a big part of that wall. And what I am going to do is this mirror over the mantelpiece. Uh, I did think as soon as I put it up that it was a bit top heavy. So it kind of makes the fireplace look a bit weird because it's bigger than the fireplace. It's a bit too out of scale. So I think what I'm going to do is probably sell that mirror. Um, get a nice price for it and then buy a, a smaller mirror for there. So that is another thing that I'm going to do. So I have painted both the colours on the wall, mouse is back and old white, and it is such a good job that I did that because I've just been saying how I really want to be brave and choose the darker, more bold mouse is back, but there's absolutely no way that I can use this in this room. It is just way too dark and would just make the room look a bit morbid, I think. Which I'm quite sad about. I really wanted to love this colour. Uh, as I showed you on the pictures, it does look quite elegant. It didn't look this dark in the pictures. But uh, this is even the brightest corner of the room because the window is just here. So in darker areas like over there, it would be even darker and just totally not would not work. So I think I am going to go for the other choice, old white. It is still dull, which I'm looking for. It's elegant. It's got the warmy, earthy tones of green in there that I think will work very well. Uh, but before I make the final decision, I do want to go back to Farron Ball and just see if there is anything else in this palette that would work. Um, there's no rush. I, I would say that with these decisions, it is quite tempting to want to rush and get it all done, but best to take the time and get the right colour. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I thought that I would show you some of the pictures that I have and where I would like to hang them. This is probably the biggest, well, it's definitely the biggest picture that I've got. I've had this since 2018. And when I used to live in the Cotswolds, um, I was at a little exhibition of a local artist and I saw some of his work and decided that I would commission a painting um, because I thought that it would be nice to have a nice piece of artwork that represented something that I was familiar with, something that I really love with the Cotswolds. So I asked him to paint me a picture of a village where I used to live called Blockley and this is what he did. The artist is called Rupert Aker. I will link his Instagram in the description so that you can have a look at his work. Um, this is not a sponsored post or anything, I just really love his work. And he is a very talented uh, impressionist artist. The thing that I love about this painting is that it is quite moody with all of the darkness here. And then you've got the contrast of the prettiness of the pinks uh, coming down the bottom and then the brightness of the sky. So it's kind of a mixture of a dark and light pretty painting, not too masculine or feminine. And I just think that it's a very relaxing scene. And this is a view to the church from the village of Blockley where I used to live. And I actually used to walk this uh, view with Sophie many times. So it brings back fond memories of living in the Cotswolds. And I think with artwork, it is important to try to choose things that have meaning so that you can have a story to tell about them and so that you've got a memory of something rather than just choosing something that doesn't really mean anything. I know that's not always easy to do, but if you can, I would suggest to do that.
this painting is going to go on this wall in the middle of the wall i think it would be nice when you first walk through the door to see this one it's quite large impactful so i think it would look quite cool on the wall eventually when i can afford to i would like to get this reframed uh, this used to actually be a different painting underneath here that I commissioned many years ago of two ladies. I'll show you a picture of that if I can find it. And it was in a quite a formal room, so I wanted a frame that reflected the room. But I think even though it's okay, I would like something a bit more simple. Maybe just a nice wooden frame in a white or cream colour with a gold edging something simple and uh, more elegant but yeah i think it's a, it's okay it's a nice painting it's a uh, pretty picture and it really makes an impact when you come into the room okay so on this wall i have these three framed botanical prints and these i've had them for about three years i found them in a charity shop in the cotswolds they weren't framed they just had the prints and so I had a local framer who made me these beautiful, they are actually real gold leaf frames. So I think because they were so inexpensive, I was able to spend more on the frames and make them look a little bit more elegant. So that is a very good tip. If you can't really afford artwork and you are looking in charity shops and uh, maybe junk stores, you can then spend extra on frames just to give them a bit of elegance and make them look a bit more special. So that's what I did with these. And these are just going to go in a line like that across the wall. I'm probably going to keep this French sofa here. When you walk through the door, I kind of wanted to keep it quite free. So uh, it was difficult for me to think about how to do that. I may, may or not keep that there, but definitely on the wall, just have these three pictures. The door opens out, so it needs to, they need to start probably about here, and it will just brighten up that wall. I decided to put this bureau here so that when you walk in the door, there is somewhere to drop your keys or maybe letters or whatever it is, sunglasses. Um, and it's also a place, if you want to, you can have a little desk here. And I just think it was nice for me to... We've got the large window there and then the door, so it kind of had to really emphasize the scale of the room and we needed something here to really give a strong feeling so i thought putting the bureau here was a good idea what i also like to do is to just enhance the scale of the room at the height of the ceiling by putting vases on top of that to lift the eye up and then in between those two vases this painting will go there and it's quite nice because it's round so it gives a Again, it will lift the height of the room, make the eye draw, draw upwards towards there. And this is just a French painting. It was a gift and it's a shepherdess and it's quite cute. So that is another tip to draw the eye upwards and to provide kind of an architectural detail in a room where there isn't one. So for example, if you had a room where there is no fireplace and you want to anchor the room somehow then a good trick is to use a big piece of furniture like this to center the room and give an architectural detail that wasn't really there before so in terms of finishing off this room there are a few things left to do uh, i'm gonna have to take my time in terms of finance and budget so i'm not gonna be able to do everything at once i did post a photograph of this room yesterday on instagram and a lot of people were commenting saying it needs more color it needs more this and i understand that but it takes time for me to get those things done i think it will be completely different once the walls have been painting and painted and the pictures have gone up and then in terms of other things, there are still things that I need to buy, but I'm going to have to wait for. So I really would like to have a very big rug in here. I've seen two different styles that I like. One is a plain sizal, and then the other one is a beautiful rug from Oka, which has been so beautifully designed. And it's got very nice needlework in there, but it's very, very expensive. So that is going to have to wait if I'm going to have that. And really in an ideal world, it would be nice to layer those two rugs together and have both of them but that is very very expensive next thing i would like to i've got this little coffee table here there is still a large space in the middle of here so i'm thinking i would like something a little bit bigger i would quite like a big ottoman style th uh, piece probably upholstered i would really like to have that and then 
the thing that I really want to change in this room are the armchairs. I've had them for at least eight years. They are falling apart. The arms have got holes in. I've washed them a million times so they're becoming threadbare and I also don't like the shape, they're too bulky. So I have seen some very beautiful armchairs that I would like to get, but again, it's just about when I'm going to be able to do that. So in terms of this room, it is pretty much uh, almost ready. Still a few things that I need to get. I'm going to paint the room hopefully next week and then it will start to come together but this is what moving into a house is like really when you're on a budget and you have to wait for things patience is a virtue well thank you for joining me in this episode i hope that you have enjoyed uh, learning about my thought process when it comes to getting into a new house and decorating and all the little fit processes that take place doing that I hope it's been fun and entertaining and maybe even a little bit useful. So I will see you next week, but until then, I hope you have a really great weekend and a wonderful week ahead. Bye-bye.